This mutation is called Sick Micro and it is being played on missed opportunities and there will be a requirement for some really sick micro given the two commanders that we are playing here. Uh, we have Black Death and Microtransactions. So uh, Microtransactions is uh, probably uh, one of the least favorite mutators for a lot of people that uh, like to play StarCraft because uh, people say it goes against the, ba the basic spirit of StarCraft which is uh, microing your units. Uh, additionally, Black Death is uh, pretty nasty as well, and uh, you'll probably notice that there is no Sukov here. Um, I think a lot of the uh, a lot of the runs that did this uh, mutator would have Sukov there because it's just for free and very very easy uh, to uh, to lose because you don't really you're not really affected by losing his units. You just keep making more because his units are free. Um, but I chose this uh, replay in particular because uh, this is showing you Phoenix and Dehaka, both of which. Both commanders have very fragile armies and really, uh, I don't really think a very effective way of dealing with this mutator, just to show you how it goes. And uh, you can see over here, Dehaka is already infected with the Black Death Mutator, and he is probably going to die at some point, but he decides to just keep slapping down that, uh, that spine crawler. Let's see if he's actually managed to live. If he jumps forward, he might be able to eat one of the Hydralisks, and there we go. He tends to jump in there, but I think he's just going to go down here. And uh, yeah, Dehaka basically dies, and uh, he will be respawning from his nest, I believe, sometime soon. I don't know if uh, the Haka is going to be forced to respawn, I don't think uh, the hero unit is going to be very useful over here, because uh, you end up also spending resources to micro him, so uh, it does make it a little bit difficult. So uh, over here we can see that uh, Phoenix is just playing down the gateway, so far, and uh, we have a Glavix Den down for Dehaka. I'm curious to know what his uh, goal is. I think he may be going for Talus first, and then uh, and then he Taldarn build, but I'm not sure. This is a very interesting uh, positioning over here. We have Kaldalas out already, so that answers my question earlier. So he's using a Kaldalas opening instead of the standard uh, Immortal opening. I'm not sure why. I'm but to be honest, like Phoenix would not have been my primary pick when I was playing this mutator. But uh, there we go. This is actually kind of lucky for Dehaka because I don't think any of these units have the plague. So uh, Dehaka is kind of lucky in this. He gets to clean up this uh, this deck wave relatively easily. He's just slapping some of these roaches. Additionally, these roaches mean that we are dealing with a ground zerg wave, which is again really really nice because uh, it means you can make an air composition and uh, for the most part be safe. The hydralisks over there will uh, still be able to target your air units, but uh, again, it should be relatively okay. So over here we do have a bunch of units that are uh, infected with plague. So let's see how Dehaka chooses to deal with that. He chooses to just ignore it, okay. So he's basically just ignored the plague here, and uh, I think he's just gone for the primal regeneration. So that is actually an interesting playstyle here. He's gone for the primal regeneration just to counteract the effects of the Black Death. Uh, over here we have Phoenix who has already jumped in, and uh, his Phoenix, actually the suit change, uh, ends up saving him and uh, removes that mutator off. I actually don't know if he were to switch back, would he uh, have the mutator active or no. That might be interesting to see. We have an attack wave now that is coming up towards this first uh, harvesting bot, but uh, Phoenix is in position and uh, cleans up everything there. So uh, he's actually he actually ends up out of range of that first uh, bit of spray there. But uh, the hacker was on the site and uh, cleaning up some of the units on the most objective, which uh, ended up killing him off there. Um, I think that Roach that was also infected happened to run away and gets focused down by Phoenix. So, uh, so far, Phoenix is okay and he is uh, unaffected by the Black Death Mutator. And as long as he's able to do that, he will be fine. So, over here, Phoenix has uh, he's done his Ricochet Glaive upgrade, which uh, is the Talus upgrade here to make him use a little bit. Uh, uh, more resilient and Phoenix jumps in. Okay, so apparently he loses the Black Death uh, Mutator from the suit if he changes uh, if he changes the suit, which is actually kind of useful. Um, I was not aware of that, but uh, again, Solo Phoenix is... I'm not sure if he's gonna be uh, good enough to be able to deal with every single attack wave here. But let's see how he chooses to play it. Might be uh, might be kind of interesting. Uh, Dehaka has spawned his Glavik now, and uh, we'll see what upgrades he's getting. I think it is theoretically possible for Phoenix and Dehaka, 
those two hero units to work together and combined with their cooldowns be able to do the rest of the do the entire mission now that I think about it they do have enough damage uh, especially with uh, Phoenix's Solarite Dragoon suit and the Dehaka's cooldowns it is going to be a little bit tricky but this might be actually kind of a fun game to watch then if uh, if that is the uh, if that is their plan From the looks of it, it does uh, appear that Phoenix will be going for uh, some uh, some combat units as well. Maybe only his champions. We'll, we'll see. So uh, the Hawk is on the side with Morvar, and he is going to be clearing up this bonus objective now. A ton of these uh, explosive creepers uh, start to take out this bonus objective here. The second wave of harvesting bots have left Stetman's uh, research facility, and uh, they will be making their way towards the second set of Terrazine geysers. So Phoenix jumps in here into the Praetor armor, jumps into the middle. Are there anything with Plague here? Yeah, there are, there are a few units with Plague. And uh, he's just going to keep uh, hitting these units down, and uh, I think he's just going to change suit once he's done, uh, done the side. Jumps in here. It's up there, and will he change it? He changes suit, and he's ready to deal with this next wave. Over here on the Solarite Dragoon, unfortunately the Solarite Dragoon does get hit by the plague, uh, but he does end up wiping this, uh, this attack wave, and uh, of course the Greater Primal Worm is immune to that because it is considered a structure. But he changes suit again, and now he is in his Cybers Arbiter suit. And I wonder what his plan is here. Okay, so Dokran has actually joined in here, and Dokran ends up taking out this attack wave. One of the good things about having a Ground Zerg attack wave is uh, Dokran works really, really well against it. So uh, Phoenix's army is all infected with the plague, so he's just going to send them in. I think he's just going to suicide them in just to make sure that the fresher units do not end up getting killed here. So Kaldalas goes down, Talos goes down, and uh, so does Dokran. And now we have this attack wave that is making its way towards the uh, harvesting bots. So uh, Dehaka jumps in. Um, and uh, combined with some of the explosive creepers that were there, uh, is able to uh, clear that side out. Now Dehaka is still infected with the plague, but he's going to try and intercept this next attack wave, so he's going to jump in. He's probably going to take one for the team here and end up dying, because there's a lot of DPS here. He does end up devouring one, and with a roar, manages to take out a few of these units, but they are still alive. But Phoenix is ready to deal with this next phase, and this uh, whatever stragglers have been uh, left remaining. We have an, uh, a solar flare used here for uh, for Phoenix. I think that was a bit of an overreaction. I don't think there was, very thing, there was anything really much uh, alive there in that engagement, but uh, Dehaka has uh, cleared out this bonus objective with some of Phoenix's army, and uh, Dehaka is now pushing into this side. I think for the most part, I think this is all okay, but Dehaka probably wants to clear the Swarm Host before it spawns its next uh, cycle, because I think each Locust has a 25 or whatever percentage chance of having the Black Death as well, so uh, keeping Dehaka alive at this point is just, uh, it's, it's just better. An allies under attack. So Phoenix is making adepts over here, and uh, we have Daka who's jumped in here now just to try and weaken this enemy camp and just clear up ahead. Again, he's gonna go down, unfortunately, due to the Black Death Mutator here. And uh, we have some uh, Creeper Hosts that have been parked on this side. I think these ones may want to be moved a little bit forward over here. We'll see what uh, we'll see what Daka's plan is. We have Keldalas and Talos, basically, uh, and an army of adepts and uh, legionnaires, so... Uh, Dallas ends up going down relatively quickly because he jumps into the middle of the fray and the rest of these adepts now are just going to start pushing in and weakening this enemy side. So Dehaka is still over here, still fighting strong. He's actually really tanky now because he has grown up a little bit. Uh, he's grown up into a slightly uh, larger mini Godzilla, but he does end up going down again. And uh, he will probably be respawned. So a lot of Dehaka's resources is going just into respawning the guy, which, uh, which is okay. But... Um, I guess it really depends. Like, is he? Is he, okay, he has the aerial burst axe upgrade, so it looks like Dehaka is just basically going for a cooldown build. Uh, he only has the aerial burst axe upgrade because that one is the only uh, is the only upgrade that does affect his cooldowns, which is Murvar. A uh, Murvar's explosive creepers then can then attack air units. So it looks like Dehaka doesn't really care if he's uh, eating all his drones just to keep respawning. I guess that's part of his plan. There are a ton of gateways over here, so uh, it's an interesting pattern actually when I think about it. If you want, you can rewind the clip and see the pattern that was made. I think there's a bit of symmetry there. 
but uh, Keldalas has pushed through here, and uh, Keldalas and uh, Phoenix with the with the army. But I think all these units are probably gonna end up dead very uh, very soon. So uh, those units are probably gonna end up suicided or just thrown into the enemy base, you know, just to make sure that the uh, the fresh units do not get captured. Very nice split there on the units, you know, making sure that he's not wasting anything unnecessarily. The rest of these units now will just be suicided into the enemy base, and uh, that's pretty much it. The uh, these wave of harvesting bots are now making their way back and uh, for the most part everything has been well defended here by Phoenix and uh, the Haka. The Haka was on this side is just being able to hold these attack waves relatively well. He's, he is infected by the plague though so uh, he will uh, eventually end up dying. But you can see these explosive creepers here for the Haka doing really really well. Um, so just a plain creeper host, primal host build uh, doing uh, relatively decently well here. Yeah, it is going to be mostly a, uh, a call-down build, but he will be using a little bit of support from these units. These units do provide temporary units, so I think they're pretty much perfect for uh, for this kind of mutation. Uh, the Haka, unfortunately, is going to be having a very, very hard time staying alive, uh, even with the buffs, um, because uh, Black Death actually uh, it actually does a lot of damage per tick. We now have an attack wave that is uh, making its way towards the Alex base, which is why see the Haka over here. Uh, he ends up uh, using Glevig, and Glevig actually ends up smoking this Infestor, which is somewhat unfortunate. But uh, now the Haka's uh, units have started to charge in here. Phoenix with the Solar Right Dragoon uses the Solar Flare, deals a lot of damage, essentially wiping the entire attack wave, but these hybrid dominators are still alive, and they end up taking Phoenix down. Uh, Phoenix's uh, army now ends up uh, joining in, and uh, combined with the... Um, with the uh, Guardian Shield of the, uh, the uh, Energizers, or the Conservators, Conservation Shield, or whatever it's called, um, keep this army alive. Again, very nice split here for uh, for Phoenix. He does end up uh, sending his units to just suicide into the enemy base. He does not want those units dying next to his army and uh, therefore triggering the uh, next one. The Haka does end up dying again, but uh, this bonus objective, I believe, has been completed. There we go. That's a really cool animation here. It was a whale, and that bonus objective is done. Both um, bonus objectives are completed now from the players, and uh, the uh, the second to last set of harvesting bots have not even spawned there, and uh, they're basically just uh, plowing through this mission. So the Haka now, uh, I believe, wants to go and poke in to Amon's base. Does he want to? It's tempting. He's looking at it. Looks like he wants to do that. And Phoenix is next to him. Almost half his size. And Phoenix might also want to join in on the fun. So the Haka repositions now his uh, his primal slash creeper hosts, and uh, we'll see how he wants to split them up. Uh, as you can see, microtransactions is pretty nasty. It does uh, end up costing him a lot of resources, but yeah, he's putting them on the high ground, which is kind of good. Uh, this will allow these guys to actually deal with the uh, with, with the spawns on these two sides, and then uh, the Haka can deal with the spawn on that side. And uh, actually, it'll also help them deal with the spawns on this side. I keep forgetting that there is also a spawn here that will harass these harvesting bots, but uh, there is some biomass here for the Haka that he hasn't actually picked up, which is uh, also somewhat unfortunate. This uh, conservator here is chilling. Uh, I think it may be used for a fast warp in case it is necessary. There we go. So there's a warp in over here. Uh, but the Haka has basically got this. Uh, he jumps into the middle of the army. Uh, essentially wipes almost all the units on that attack wave. And that attack wave has been cleared up. Phoenix just slowly picking out these creep tumors. And we wait for the next harass wave to spawn. So, next harass wave does end up spawning on this side. This was sheer luck that I was looking in this area. Phoenix jumps in. Uh, uses his whirlwind ability, essentially one shotting a lot of the units, and now we have an army of uh, explosive creepers on this side to just uh, clean up whatever's left of the site. Uh, Phoenix does change suits now, so he gets rid of that uh, debuff that he has, and he stays in his uh, Cybers Arbiter suit on here. We have a bunch of observers now that are being made for Phoenix, just to provide a little bit of vision. Another uh, harass wave comes up here, and Phoenix's Soul Ride Dragoon essentially just melts that attack wave entirely, and uh, whatever now is left. And it gets cleaned up by the explosive creepers. Next uh, harass wave comes up here, but there are a ton of primal worms here that we'll be able to hold. Um, unfortunately, these things are not really too great for dealing with an attack wave, but the Haka jumps in, deep tunnels in, and uh, cleans up the rest of this attack wave. Uh, let's see where the next spawn comes up. I'm going to guess uh, over here? Nope, over here. So, uh, next wave is here, and uh, we have uh, Phoenix's uh, army here, and a bunch of explosive creepers, again, are in position to uh, clean up whatever... Uh, this attack wave has to send at them. 
And these harvesting bots are making their way back, but there will be an attack wave that will be coming up uh, on this side. Uh, the attack wave will spawn over here and we will move downwards, so this is how these players choose to engage this. But first, there is another harass wave here, but Phoenix is on point here and uh, ends up using his whirlwind ability again. And like you uh, clearly said, there's a lot of essence here for Dehaka that he should probably try and pick up because uh, it'll give him a lot more HP and a lot more survivability. An attack wave has spawned here. Phoenix is in position with his Solar Ride Dragoon. And uh, I do not know if he has a Solar Flare upgrade. It doesn't look like he does. But uh, Dehaka's Explosive Creepers are way more than enough to clear that attack wave almost in its entirety. And whatever cloak units are there also end up getting cleared. And uh, that's pretty much it for that attack wave. This last spot is making its way back, and now there is a lot of downtime. I'm not sure if the uh, the players will want to lay siege to Amon's base here. Uh, Phoenix does jump over here to just clean some of these uh, creep tumors, and uh, the Haka is just going to do slapping the rest of these creep tumors down. So yeah, there's a lot of essence on this side. If I was the Haka, I would probably try and deep tunnel across just to get that, because it would bug me a lot there, and uh, especially because there's a lot of downtime. Uh, for the uh, for the commanders here, um, we'll see how uh, he chooses to do this now. He uh, deep tunnels all his uh, worms to get into position, so he'll be able to deal with anything that is spawning from this uh, from this wave. Unfortunately, the broodlings also do have black death, and they end up infecting the Haka. But uh, I think the Haka wants to go into this enemy base here and just wreak some havoc. So Glevik comes down, and a scorched breath uh, is sent down here. Uh, Moravar, I think, also. Oh no, Doctor gets sent and Moravar, so it's the trifecta over here. And there are a bunch of explosive creepers that are being sent uh, from the Haka's army to uh, just try and lay siege to this base. So this base is just going to be completely smashed. It's going to be an all clear here. Glevik is really, really strong. Moravar as well, really, really powerful. And. Uh, Phoenix is just over here, just relaxing. Uh, Dehaka has already repositioned the stuff here, and he's sending another bunch of explosive creepers towards the space. Dehaka is infected though, and uh, but he will be picking up a lot of the essence from this side. But again, there is a lot of essence over here that uh, Dehaka is kind of missing out on. I think he knows it's there, I just don't know if he is finding enough time, I think. I think what might be happening is he just thinks he doesn't have enough time to go ahead and just collect that essence. Either that or he might have missed it. But uh, the Haka does get focus fired down by a bunch of Broodlords, Spore Crawler and Spine Crawler. Eats up uh, one of these locusts at the very last minute and using the damage reflect ends up killing a lot of the units there but uh, he ends up going down. But uh, that should reset his HP um, and uh, he'll be ready for to deal with the next wave of uh, bots here. We have a Greater Primal Worm that gets uh, end up being spawned over here but uh, nothing else to try and back it up so that just ends up going down really really fast and uh, the Haka is uh, making his way back. He is sending a bunch of explosive creepers on the site. Uh, it is very tempting to try and move them up forward because you know, you're trying to clear the enemy base but remember these bots are now making their way towards the main objective which means attack waves are going to start spawning like that and you kind of don't want to lose these guys just because you want to clear the base and flex on Amon. So uh, it's a good thing he's actually kept these units back here. It's also going to help uh, deal with some of the attack waves that uh, will be spawning over here, for example, over here. I think these guys are still in cooldown. So Phoenix jumps in here, uses a whirlwind to uh, clean up most of the attack wave, gives a lot of the Ravagers, and now these explosive creepers are ready to clear the side. Most of Amon's base has been uh, lost, but uh, there are a few more units. I think the uh, I think the commanders will be able to clear it on uh, on the trip back while these bots are making this. They haven't even like gone to their uh, their final uh, destination yet, so we'll see what happens there. There is another harass wave that keeps spawning on the site, and um, it will uh, and Phoenix is there in his Cybers Arbiter suit, which is unfortunate because it's not very useful in terms of DPS. But the Haka is in position and ends up uh, cleaning up that uh, the harass wave. Uh, another one is spawning at the side as well, so the Haka is ready for that as well. Uh, he's going to go in and uh, eat this infester, and one cyanotic explosion instantly wipes out that entire uh, harass wave. Uh, as you can see, the Haka is still infected. He uh, he is uh, he does actually uh, have uh, a significant amount of HP. I can't actually uh, like he he's collected about two thousand six hundred essence. So uh, yeah, he has about. HP does he have? Let me try to see. He has about 2600 HP there, so it should give him a reasonable amount of uh, sustainability in combat, but uh, over here Phoenix is ready in the Soul Ride Dragoon with a bunch of explosive creepers and they end up cleaning up that attack wave. The Haka is just completely focused on trying to clean the side out and he's almost there. Um, as soon as the... Uh, as soon as these harass waves stop spawning, uh, I think he's probably gonna end up moving his unit, his uh, creeper hosts and primal hosts uh, if... Uh, 
if he hasn't actually cleared the rest of the side yet, but there are a ton of primal worms here and they should be able to clear. A uh, Phoenix's uh, Praetor armor suit does end up going down unfortunately, but Phoenix's army is ready and uh, he has a Solar Rite Dragoon also ready to uh, clean up uh, whatever is left of this uh, harass wave. Over here we have uh, the main attack wave that had spawned, and that ends up cleaning up Dehaka completely. He just gets completely wrecked by the amount of hybrids and the attack wave there. Uh, Black Death does end up weakening a lot of the heroic units there, so I'm not kind of surprised. Dehaka's back with a vengeance, jumps in with a lure, devours a hybrid dominator there, and deals a lot of damage combined with the backup of his, uh, uh, of his uh, primal host. There is uh, there are three lurkers on this side, but these things will go down relatively fast. And there is one more harass wave up on this side. But uh, Phoenix's army is ready. He does have Warbringer and a few of his other champions already and chilling on the side. Dehaka spawns Glavic one more time. I don't think he's gonna have enough time to clean up this entire base. He's gonna be really close, I think. But uh, there's one more here as well. But uh, I don't think he's gonna clear. It's gonna be really really tight though. We have a scorched breath coming down here from Glavic. Uh, that Greater Spire goes down, and that actually base finally goes down. There is one Overseer though, who is I believe the only survivor in this whole brawl here. And uh, nope, 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 nope. That Overseer just gets completely eaten, and that is a full clear of this map on this Mutator. And uh, actually a perfect clear as well. All the bonus objectives are done, and that last Harvesting Bot as well has been saved. No Harvesting Bots were lost, and that is GG.